Hello, hello, hello. How is everybody doing? Thanks for coming on this special training webinar today. I am really excited because we have myself and our HUD guru in the office who buys all of our HUD houses. And she has, I don't know, uh, looking on the board. Andrea, you're out there right now at your desk looking at the board. What do we have? Seven or eight, six or seven, seven, eight HUD deals on the board right now? Yeah, I have four, um, five, six, seven. Yes. Seven. Right now, seven HUD deals on the board. And we're going to show you actually the very most recent ones today. But um, you guys are in for a real treat. We've never done this before. So uh, we have spent uh, literally about a year updating. Uh, I'd say it's a year. It's probably more like six months, really. But uh, updating our HUD spreadsheet, updating uh, all the bells and whistles, everything it will do. We have a HUD sheet that is second to none. In fact, I paid a guy $4,000 to create this HUD sheet. And he and Andrea, I mean, you guys got to know each other really well getting this thing put together, didn't you, Andrea? We did. We did. Howard is a great guy. <laughs> yeah, he is. He's he's from overseas. He's from South Africa. But he is a he is a spreadsheet guru. This guy can make a spreadsheet do anything. So we put together our wish list and uh, of everything we wanted it to do. We wanted it to simplify the entire process so anybody using it could pretty much automate their entire HUD buying process. Right, Andrea? Yes, sir. We did. That's awesome. So, uh, Andrea, you've got controls now. Uh, it's your screen that we're seeing. You've opened up the HUD spreadsheet. Why don't you first start out and tell our listeners a little bit about yourself? Sure. Um, well, I've been here with Larry about a year and a half now. Um, I am licensed in North Carolina and I have about 15 years experience prior to coming here two years ago in Texas um, as an agent and coaching folks doing um, for sale by owners listings and that sort of thing. I've done some investing myself as well um, prior to that. And, I am here empty nesting with my um, wonderful husband. We have two, two children that live here in the Carolinas with us, and we have two back in Texas. That's awesome. That's good. That's good. Well, thanks, Andrea. I appreciate you sharing that with everybody. And those of you who have been here to the office for our Inner Circle program, you've met Andrea before, and she's... Uh, you know, uh, she's she's worked with you to help you get your HUD sheet up. But uh, but Andrea, why don't you start out and just do us a demo? Just spend a little bit of time, you know, going through the HUD sheet, showing first of all what it does, and then second of all how to use it. That would be okay. great. Sure. So this is the HUD sheet when it first opens up in Excel. Now this is kind of our control panel. As a matter of fact, you'll see here down in the bottom, you'll have tabs where active, inactive, and then you can set your parameters and then the control tab. And that's where we are here at the beginning control tab button. So from here, you can navigate um, through the spreadsheet. So from this page, you will get your latest HUD listings which HUD allows you to export them, export them, and that's why we're able to do that with the click of a button as well as update. Once we've done that, you can switch states if you'd like to do that. Um, I'm going to stay in North Carolina, but if I wanted to, it would ask me, would you like to switch to? And then your states are there that you want to switch to. Um, because there's so much information that gathers, it takes a few minutes to switch states. <laughs> Um, so that's why I don't want to do that right now. You can also update HUD counters. You can also get data for your VA, and that'll pull it all into a spreadsheet for the VA, and they can print, you know, they can go ahead and do their, if, if you have a VA doing the bidding, they can go ahead and just get that information from there as well. Now, the first thing I'm going to go ahead and do is pull today's data, and I'll show you how to do that. So I'm just going to click the button here. And what it will do is at the bottom, it's going to open up an Excel. 
and then you can go ahead i'm sorry excel explorer and then what we're going to just we're going to save as so we have all the files saved through dropbox and then you should have them saved because i think dropbox correlates with your desktop as well so you'll want to have them saved on your hard drive as well as your dropbox and so we have files dropbox new hud and then that's the data file so in the data file you'll separate into folders by state so we're doing north carolina so i'm going to go into the north carolina folder and i'm just going to say sure. hold on just for a second i want to make sure everybody can see your screen i got a couple of people saying they cannot see any video okay. uh, so guys shout out there in the questions let me know can you see can you see Andrea's screen? Can you see the HUD sheet? Okay, yes, yes. Still cannot see screen. This is just, okay, I can see it, I can say it. Okay, there's only one person saying that they can't see it. Robert, I'm not really sure what you're doing, but everybody else says, yes, they can see it. Okay, cool. All right, sorry, Andrea, I didn't mean to interrupt sure. you, go ahead. No problem. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna save it in the data file for North Carolina. And the reason we're saving all of the data is because when you make, when HUD makes updates, you can still have that information in there. Okay, and so that we'll just go ahead and save it. It'll save it as the date, close that out. And then I'm going to update the sheet with what we just saved, which is the actual export from HUD. So make sure I'm in the right state and I just need to go down and look at today's date. And I'm going to say OK. And it's going to start working. So it's pulling all the information, it's merging any information that's already been saved, it's updating everything. The way we had this created was so that we can hold and update all of our notes um, that we wanted in there. You don't want to lose that because then you have to start all over again. So right now it's automatically populating the updated sheet and merging it with all of your previous information and data that has been saved, like notes that you took on each property and things like that, correct? Correct. Good, good, good. Yeah. So it yeah. might take it a minute to load all this. It but, might take uh, just but a that's minute. Key. But that's the beautiful thing about this sheet. You no longer have to go to hudhomestore.com, log in, export the sheet, download it, and then import it into the other sheet. You just, it's just push button and it does it for you. Once you get it set up, right? Correct, it's so simple once it's done. I mean, it just, it, it's, it's a huge time saver. That's awesome. And that's one of the features I know that you asked him if he could do to simplify so we didn't have to go to HUD Home Store, do a look up, download it, merge it, and then populate it so it just with the push of a button once you have it set up and it knows your criteria then it does it all for you correct so this is what the active page is now if i click back here to controller that's where we were earlier once it does everything and it updates it it automatically brings you into your active tab now over in the inactive, these are all properties that were once active and they've been pulled. Either they have sold or sometimes they'll just pull the property because it's under contract or they're reviewing it um, for some reason or another and it just gets over here. There are many times when you can get an email from HUD saying you previously put in a bid. As a matter of fact, the, the latest one we just got was one of those. You previously put in a bid at whatever amount are you still interested and they pulled that property so we couldn't actually bid on it and we just you know we told them yes we were and they said okay it'll come up tomorrow so make sure you put that bid in uh, i did that they asked me to notify them when it was done so i sent their i sent her the confirmation sheet and we won the bid the next day so we'll go back to the actives now the way we have this set up we try to have it so that it we we created it so that it's sort of in order on the information that you need moving down um he was able to also it's obviously a very large spreadsheet but believe it or not it was a lot bigger than this <laughs> so this is pretty simplified there's a lot of information you need and then there are just the bare bones that you need and you can make that happen as well he created these arrows here so he could let me see. 
I told him that I needed to see all the vital information at one screen in one moment when I was analyzing. If I needed other information, I could go in and look at it. But this is what I need when I'm doing a straight analyzation. And this is what he gave me. So with the click of a button here at the top with the arrows, I can have it just give me the bare basics, which is how long it's been on, on the market, or actually that's the last that's the last preview that they've done on the property. And then the case number, the current list price, original list price, the last price change, because those are the biggest things I wanna look at when I'm glancing at, okay, what was it for? What's it listed at now? You know, what was the, the price change prior to that? This is our highest and best, and this is what's automated. And then this is my highest and best. So this is the acquisition highest and best. So I can go in and quickly update that and override the automated highest and best. These are the percentages so that I can see that as well. I wanna see quickly, you know, what my actually actual bid is on the percentage versus what the automated bid is. And then this is gonna be the Friday bid. This just helps me confirm that the number's right and I can see that. Um, this is a punch list. I wanna know what it's gonna cost when I'm looking at the properties for an after repaired value. Since we're wholesaling, we wanna be sure to have the after repaired values, the repaired items, and then what we think that that estimate's gonna be. These are our notes and this is these are our comps. Comp one, two, and three, I wanna be able to put those in quickly. And then this is the HUD home store link to a particular property. Now I can open these all up and that's gonna give me the address, the city, the state, the zip code, the county, the bed count, the bath count, square footage, the year. All this information is on the HUD home store page. So I really don't need to see that at a glance because when I open up the HUD home store page, I'll see that when I'm previewing the property and previewing addendums. So that's why I, I didn't necessarily need that. And then if I open this one up, this gives me the HUD counter date, and this gives me the HUD counter amounts, and then, you know, what the percentages are, and then the, high, the, the last highest and best as well that we put in. Um, don't really need to see that every now and then I'll open it up and take a look and say, okay, let me see where we're at with the bidding. And then this is our Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday bid. So every day, depending on what I put for the end at 52, every day it's going to go ahead and start at a lower increment and increase daily. Okay, and then down here, these are all our wonderful links. So we have direct links to the home, the HUD Home Value website, your Google Maps, Trulia, Real Realtor, Zillow, and then it tells us the status, if it's active, it's been reactivated, if there's been a price change, there aren't any price changes right now. Um, I believe it's the end of the quarter and you'll see a lot of movement happening towards the, the end of the quarters and um, I was all cut up on my HUD page but they have moved properties drastically in the last week or two so that's why there's quite a few there that I need to analyze um, let's see here the HUD status sometimes they'll enhance commissions and this is great because this all pulls from the export if it's a brand new listing we have it in blue if there's a price reduction I have that color coded in green and then you can see all of these are reduced price and I have them stay that way for a few days I think we have maybe a four or five day window so that if you can't get to it and analyze it that day, I'm like, okay, I need it to, to stay flagging me for a few days in case I can't touch my spreadsheet. And so that's what we've done. So it'll stay that way for a few days. And then after that, it's already gone back to, to just a normal white color. And then these are the dates you can track um, movement on what's happened on the status. here okay let's go ahead and start here with the links so these are really neat so we'll just pick this one 
so immediately it came up on my other screen sorry immediately it pops up with the HUD homepage so that you can see pictures of the property Andrea I hope they know how valuable all those links are I mean when this sheet when this sheet imports the properties it automatically puts a link in to HUD Home Store, HUD Home Value, Google Maps, Trulia, Realtor.com, and Zillow.com automatically. Yes. So all you've got to do is click on that field, and that's all you've got to do. Click on the field, and it immediately opens up that that website for that specific property. Correct. It, it's amazing because it's all right here. I don't have to go in and open everything up all over again. Um, here's home value. I'm closing the other pages and uh, see if it'll show. Okay, they don't have anything listed for this property right now. Um, Google mm -hmm. Maps. Let's take a look at it and see where it is. There we go, that fast. Yeah, then you can do the street view if you want to. Mm -hmm. You can. So I know where that right. one is. It's near High Point. That gives me a better idea since we're buying all over the state. Okay, what part of the state is this in? Then I can close, you know, of course, obviously zoom in. How close to town are we? What's around here for town? You know, what kind of shopping there is? How big a town it is? And then we can definitely go ahead and walk the street from there walk the neighborhood, that sort of thing. Andrea, do you have to unprotect and enter a password every time you use that sheet? Mm, every time you use the sheet, yes. But once you're in the sheet, it doesn't like expire or anything. Right, right. Yeah, Ralph was just asking that. What of our inner sure. circle members? Okay, so let's pull up Zillow. Realtor.com. Here it is there. So obviously valuable information. You can go ahead and confirm and make sure all the information that you're pulling um, seems to be the same. You can get sometimes on Realtor.com, actually many times, you're going to get a whole lot more photos. It just depends on the listing agent. Of course, you can see similar homes here and see what's happening. You can take a look at a map there. Um, this is vital information, property history. You can kind of see what's been happening. And then homes around the area as well. Okay. And then let's see here. Let's go ahead and pull Zillow. Zillow is another one of my favorite things. Um, tools to use when I'm analyzing only because I love the little map that it can show up real quick. It's a good reference point. So there's a map, type of listings. I want to see recent sold and actual for sale, mostly recent sold. I don't have anything set here as far as home types. I just have them all up there. Uh, I'd like to see them. You want to see days sold. You probably want to see them within the last six or 12 months. You want to see six or ninety day, six months or ninety days. If you don't get a really good idea, um, ninety days is okay since it's the summertime. So there's a lot of property movement going on. But if it's a slow season um, during the winter or the fall, you can extend that and just kind of get a vibe for what's happening. And many times I'll extend that and get it. I will get a picture look of okay, what's been happening over twelve months, six months, ninety days. You know, is the market getting hot or is it getting colder there? Okay, so let's see. And you can just take a closer look and see what things are selling for. And see what the competition is. Is this new construction? Is it not? See what you know, if it's really apples to apples. That sort of thing. If you see anything priced really low, you want to know why, what's happening there, what does it look like? Sometimes, okay, this looks like it was just a lot. 
Um, and then I will always verify this information if I don't feel like you know something's right with it. I will copy that right. address and verify it with Realtor.com because Realtor.com is connected to the MLS, whereas Zillow Good. can you know anybody can put a listing on. Right. Okay. But these, yeah, these links are amazing. They make everything so quick. So you can look at the property, you can go ahead and analyze it. You can put your notes in there. And then if it ever goes off of active and moves over here to inactive, all of our notes are still saved. So once it goes back to active and it moves to that page, everything is there still. Or yeah, that's once very I important. That's very important, guys, because sometimes a property will, will get under contract, they'll accept a bid, and it goes inactive or off market like we'll show you in a few minutes. And then what happens is they don't close for some reason. Maybe they couldn't get their money or something, and then it goes back on the market. So the cool thing is we don't lose any of our notes or data or anything that we've put in about that specific property, right? Correct. And then many times as well, once we get it under contract, immediately um, they'll move it over. So it'll go in inactive. So for instance, one of the, if I get a new property accepted and I've already updated my spreadsheet, it's no longer active. So I'll need to go back in in my notes and say, okay, what did I like about this property? Uh, how much did I think we needed in repairs with it? So I don't have to necessarily reanalyze, I can, I have a good starting point and then I can dig further. Um, so I'll go through, look at my numbers again, if we decide to keep it and, you know, make sure that I have everything that I needed there. I always put numbers on what I think we're going to wholesale it for. So I'll have that in there as well. So I have a good starting point in reference. I've got this property under contract because obviously you see how many I'm doing. I'm not going to remember them all. Um, so once we get something in a contract, I can look at it and, oh, yeah, this is the one I liked or I didn't like or whatever the situation is. Those notes are vital once we get under contract because once that information is removed from the page, it's no longer there. Larry, did you have any other questions or want uh, me to yeah, talk about you, anything particular? Did you mention about all the different color coding and how that works? Sure. So we have parameters here. And so what we have is once it's reactivated, everything automatically, once it's pulled off of the active page, is turned orange. So when it's reactivated, it'll come back and the orange stays. And if it's brand new, we have it. Sometimes they'll they'll list something as um, just new and not new listing. It just depends on whoever's entering the data, which is strange. So if it says new, new and new listings are both, yeah, it's purple and, and blue. Uh, they'll come out. And then if there's enhanced commissions, um, that's a good flag for me because that means they're really trying to push the property. So we have a chance to get it. We could even bid lower. We could come up higher. We need to reanalyze that property and see, you know, how desperate they are to move it. And even if they are, do we really want it? Why are they so desperate to move it? Okay. Uh, pending sale. Uh, usually it won't show on our spreadsheet as a pending sale just because a lot of times they don't use that as data but sometimes they do so we just want to make sure we catch all the different statuses that they bring back and then the green is price reduced that's awesome and then that's the PDF version of it. And that's what we have under the controller. If we want to just pull a data and pull a PDF version, that's what it looks like. And she can either um, bid from here. All she needs to bid is the case number, the, the amount to bid every day, everything else she has already. And she needs to know the state because you have to bid under a different broker. Everything else she has, everything else is automatic. She already has our information, who we use as the attorneys, 
we're the buyer all the time, same information's in there. So that's the only information that she needs is the case number and that correlates with everything and how much we want to bid every day. Awesome, awesome. That's good stuff. Right, we'll go back to our page. So I really like that you can obviously get whatever information you need. You can slim it down and just bring it back here to the bare bones of things of what you wanna look at. Um, your addresses, all of that's there, but you really don't even need to have this information open as long as you're on the home page for HUD, which we provide the link for. That is so vital to have the link connected with all of your data because you just open that page up and there's your link to the property. I just opened the same one. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Guys, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them. I am getting questions and I am asking them or answering them as I can, but feel free to shoot out any questions. Um, I've got one here, uh, Andrea, that says, why are there two case numbers? Why are the two case numbers different? I'm not sure exactly what you were doing when uh, Sandra asked that. Two pages ago, two different case numbers. Well, each property has its own case number. I'm not sure if that's what she means or not. Yeah, there's always a, a case number for every single property. No two case numbers, no two properties will ever have the same case number. So the case number here correlates to the case number that is actually with the HUD Home Store link. So oh, these okay. two case numbers will match. Right, okay, good. Is that good. maybe I not that, that she's asking? I hope that helped, yeah. Good, good, good. Okay. Very so cool. I just clicked that link and here's the property information for that case number. And then also, I don't know if you guys are familiar with the addendums that are also there on the HUD homepage, which that's why the link is so vital. I don't have to go and log in at the top here because you do have to log into the HUD home store. And then if you're inactive for any amount of time, it you, ha you, know, you have to log back in, you have to find your case number, stick it back in there and do a search. This is just so easy once I'm on the HUD sheet. I don't ever have to log back in or get booted out because even if I do, you know, this will give me a brand new link to whatever page I'm looking at. And so there are addendums here that you can look at. You can look at a map. It tells you this is the agent information that's there, your listing broker, the asset manager who's handling that, and the field service managers. Uh, but the addendums are what's vital. So you have your ECR sheet, which is going to be environmental so this tells you automatically this is the first thing i do i open it up and with five seconds i can look at this and close it so everything either is not listed and the register of historic places we don't like to buy in historical places because it takes it's a lot more expensive of a rehab to do um is it in a flood plain it is or is not airport clear zones not summary not basis on finance above so what we look at is i immediately look and make sure that all these x's are on the right side i don't want anything on the left side so i can see that in a quick glance and then i'm done i can close that out i want to make sure that it's not in a flood zone and then this is a property condition report pcr you can click it really quick it downloads open it up you can see exactly what damages you're looking at Okay, heat and furnace, damage. Okay, sometimes it's light, sometimes there's nothing on the page, but that's a quick must have if you're analyzing. This is new, um, they do it in some states, but they don't do it in all the states, which is strange, but they're starting to do it more and more now in North Carolina. Um, they do it in South Carolina, but this is an appraisal repair. So this is a repair description that was done by the field managers and they even give you estimated cost. And they even give you a 10% contingency spread cost, which is really great to have. And they've just started doing that uh, in North Carolina anyway. They do, like I said, they do do it in South Carolina and some of the states are just hit and miss. So maybe they're gonna start requiring it from all the states, I'm not quite sure. 
that that's vital information as well. Okay, and then there's just your other document that you might need, investor sales package, good neighbor sales package. Um, but right. those three items are the most important on That's your addendums. Good. That's awesome. Andrew, is there anything else you want to show them about the sheet and how it works? I know I've had a couple of people say it's very small fields and, and it looks complicated. But Andrea, I mean, and, and you can you can speak to this, but it's not complicated. It just has a lot of data in there. So it has everything you need but it's not really that complicated, correct? Correct, no, not complicated at all. That's what's so great about it, especially when I have it condensed here. Um, the only thing I have, the reason this field for us is only important, obviously, because who's working on it. This field is important so that you can know when the last time they went and inspected a property was, the older it gets, the more opportunity that you have for winning a bid, because we're bidding so low. So we kind of play the waiting game with them. Um, and then the case number, the price, if, if I'm analyzing and moving quickly, all I need is this page up right here. I don't need everything extended into it. But those are for quick references to look at. The truth is all you do need is you need your links here, which are great to pop that information in, and then you just start plugging away with your notes. And then you just want your after repair value. You're, you're, the thing, the goal that you're trying to do obviously is get your bidding amount. What is going to be your offer amount? So right. that, as far as that being complicated, you're gonna have to do that regardless of whether you have my wonderful spreadsheet or not. <laughs> right, right. And I love the way you have those little uh, red arrows up there because that's yeah. that's a feature that you ask them to include because there's some things you really just don't want cluttering up your desktop at, at any given time. Yeah. You can hide stuff and then view stuff and make it automatically. Right. I just don't need it when I'm doing when I'm doing everything, but I need to have it. Um, like for instance, if we win a bid, okay, I'm going to put the information in there. You know. I'll pop this over and okay, where was that bid? Which one is it? Because if my arrow is clo is closed, I can't I can't see it. I could do a search um, with just the case number, or I can just open it up and go, okay, what street was that? What I like about it? You know, the county just depends. It's just it's just for research purposes, but it's all contained right here. And so when you're using research and you're doing research, you want everything that you need. And that's what I like about it, that it's it's all here, it's all condensed. Um, you know, this, these fields right here, Monday through Friday bid, I don't need to have or see those, but they need to be there because they're automated and it's it. that's why the spreadsheet was created so that we could automatically come up with those numbers and have it. So once I plug in a number here, that changes my number for what we're bidding on. I don't need to see that, my bidder does, but I don't need to have that, so that's why I can take it out. But is it vital to the spreadsheet? Absolutely. So it's a way to condense all the different processes that you will have or go through with bidding on HUDs. So you have the analyzing, you have the, the information that you need, you have the analyzing you can do, within the same place and then you have your end number your information for your bidding all in the same place as well that's awesome that's awesome man we're getting a lot of good questions i should be asking them out loud but i'm responding to all replying to all but uh some people wanting to know things like you know don't you have to enter in the realtors naid number and all that stuff to put in the bids and all that well all that stuff that the realtors info their email address everything is already set up you do that in the pre-setup before you ever start using the spreadsheet you, you know you you need to have all that stuff you know you're going to know who you're going to use as a realtor you're going to have know what state you're going to bid in you're going to know your property criteria and then you're going to put all that stuff in the spreadsheet so whenever you open up the spreadsheet you can click the button and it'll automatically import all that stuff for you 
and Correct. set it all up. Put that all in the parameters here. Basically, all we're going to need is the broker's email address because this is not allowing you to bid on the HUD properties. This is allowing you to research and pull all the information from the HUD properties. T tell them a little bit about the default bid amount, like percentage versus you going in and putting a uh, putting a specific number on the property. Sure. So the default bidding amounts are here. Um, this is this row here, row X, if y'all can see that. Um, but it's 40%, 25%, and 50% is what we do for default. Okay. So anything over 100,000 is automatically entered at 50%. Pay anything, attention, guys. This is good stuff right here. Pay attention. Anything 50 to 100 is at 40%. And anything below 50 is at 25%. So it's automatic. So we'll take this one here. So this was a bit, this is automatic at 50%. It's list price right now is 132.45 current price. That's the same because it's brand new. So our automated bidding system at 50% tells us to bid at 66,000. So if you see that here, it's gonna go bid at 66,000 on monday you're going to start at 62.9 on tuesday 63 and it just goes up in increments and then you know what his formula is for that someone just asked and i said i don't know he he created some kind of formula but i don't know what it is i don't know what the percentage spread is it's not much um yeah i don't know what the increment spread is okay yeah i don't, I don't either but it's just it's a it's a i, I don't even want to say random but it's a it's an odd number that leads up to the maximum bid on Friday. Correct. And so that will automatically set there. So what happens is when I go in and analyze something, I will go ahead and change that. Say I think we can bid higher than that. So if I put in 70, so I went from 50 to 53 is what, and, and this is what I like to see too, is that's what I have highlighted in yellow. These are the most important things on your spreadsheet. You wanna know the list price, your case number, obviously, what your bid amounts are. So I just went from 50% to 53%. And so I, it overrides what your automated bid amount is. Or I could have gone below and said, you know what, Th that's, they're overpriced. It's not a good bid amount. I'm only going to offer 40. So it turns out I'm only doing 30%, and then it changes the bid amount. So the right. acquisition manager has the opportunity to override all of the automated highest and best numbers. And that's actually right. the goal of the spreadsheet is for someone to go in there and analyze and put real numbers to these. Sometimes and, they're and higher, sometimes they're lower. Right. And I want you guys to look, look how many deals there are right now in North Carolina. There's only what, 30 some, 35, 35. deals, 35 in North Carolina. Now mm -hmm. we're bidding on North and South Carolina and South Carolina has about how many every day? About 20 to 30. North Carolina just dropped. We were about 47 um, averaging. And so, it, like I was saying earlier about quarterly, well, they go through and they'll kind of clean house. And that's what they've done here lately. Right. So my point is, Andrea, you spend, I, I don't know how many, how much time it is, maybe a couple hours or a few hours a day or something on this HUD sheet. But, mm -hmm. you know, but, but once, once you have a number on this sheet, I think it's important that everybody knows, once you have a number on this sheet for every property, then all you really have to do is is deal with the back on the market the new listings the price reductions and the counters correct Correct. everything that's highlighted everything that's going to flag you and get a new number once that's in there then i can go in and go okay well obviously blue it's you know brand new so i need to take a look at it here's a green one there was a price reduction it started out original list this one here at 135 it is now down to 109 
So we need to go in and figure out and obviously change our price and make sure that we still want to offer that. Is my ARV off? What's going to happen? You know, what's happening in this market? What did I miss when I analyzed the first time? What did they miss when they analyzed and put their price on there? Because obviously there's a difference now, 35, you know, $30,000 difference. And um, so you just need to reanalyze those properties. You don't have to go through and do do everything all over again. You just want awesome. to keep up with what's happening. So, and right now you've got seven deals on the board. And guys, this is just HUD. Now, I'll be the first one to tell you, you know, there's fewer properties now than there used to be, right, Andrea? Correct. But right now we have seven HUD deals on the board. That doesn't count our pay-per-click deals or our MLS deals or Facebook deals or whatever. That's just HUD. We have seven deals on the board right now with HUD and we're getting ready to show you a few of them here in just a minute. Uh, is there anything else you want to show them before we do that? No, I don't think so. I think we're good. Yeah, we did that four. About it. We picked up four in April, dropped one, sold one, have one under contract. We did three in May, dropped one, and so far, I've got two in June. Right. So now, now remember, guys, that's because it takes a little while to get them through the pipeline because we try to set up a 30 or 45 day close. Right. Right. Correct. So right now being, you know, the third week in June, the third week in June, we've gotten two so far this month. Right. We Correct. got four last month and then whatever it was the month before. Yeah, okay? I think we did like five. Um, but that's, like, just, that's just HUD. Okay. So. Andrea, would you would you go up to your dashboard, your control panel, click on sharing and change the presenter to me, and we'll nice. talk about we'll we'll look at some specific properties and you can uh, you can okay. talk to those. Okay, let me know if you can see my screen. Yes. Okay, good, 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 good. I want to make sure I still I'm still able to answer the questions here. All right, guys, uh, this is a property we picked up. Um, it's, you can see it's pending right now. I think this is the most recent one. We just, we literally just picked up 510 sample road in Greenwood, South Carolina. It's pending. We got this one for 33,000. Uh, let's look down here, this property, here's the price history. Look at this. It started out listed for, it was sold to the lender for 70,000, right? And it was listed for 80, then it dropped to 72, 64. Pending sell back on the market, pending sell back on market, pending sell back on market, price change 58. And then we picked it up for $33,000, $33,660 actually, right? Correct. Yeah, $33,660, right? And, you know, we can just look through here at some of the pictures. You can see, um, you know, it's not a bad looking little house, right? has a creek in the back. This is a great little filthy riches deal, livable or close to level. It needs carpet, you know, or if you're gonna do a fix and flip, that's fine too, right? The next yep. property is Six Fairfield in Sumter. Now it shows here sold 830 of 17 for 40,000. That's because it's off the market right now, if you'll look. It just 524, the listing was removed. That's when they accepted our offer, right? Correct. 524 they accepted our offer. So because HUD, what HUD does is after they after they accept a bid, they pull it off the MLS. So they accepted a bid on this one of 37,000, seven uh 37,620, right? But you can see it started out, it sold to the foreclosure lender for 40. It was listed for 73, then 66, removed back on the market, and then 59, 550. And we picked it up for 37, right? Yes. Now, here is uh, the next one. Now, this one right here is listed for 92, or excuse me, 95, it says pending, right? What is this? Uh, Look at this little house. That's not bad, is it?
Now we picked this house up. Let's look down here at the history. It's a three bedroom, two bath, 2,100 square feet. Price history. It started out at 112. Well, actually it says listing removed at 104. It was on auction.com. 112, 103, 95, 95, back on market, pending sale. And look, 95, and we picked it up for 56, a little over half, right? A little over half. And not bad, huh? So let's look at the next one. This is one that we literally uh, we literally just closed on, right? This house is 570 Haven Road. I want you to look at this. This is going to blow you away. This is a great fix and flip property. Look, it started out in September at 309. They dropped it to 285, pending sale back on the market, dropped it down to 262, 262, pending sale back on market, pending back on market. Listing was removed at 262. We picked this house up for $133,000. And we actually wholesaled it for $150,000, right? Correct. Yep. So we made, yeah, so we made a decent amount of money what, $17,000, $18,000, probably sixteen dollars or $17,000 on it. We wholesale it, but we wholesale it to a fix and flip investor. Look, it's 2,300 square feet, right? And, and, and that just blows me away that they would accept, that they would accept 133 and it was listed for 262. That's a 50.7% of value, right? 50% of value. And here, I think, is the most recent one we just picked up, right, Andrea? Yes, yep. Juanita Avenue has a pending offer. Uh, let's look at the history on this one. Uh, 104, 96, 88, 88, back on market, pending sale. Uh, see, it was pending sale just yesterday. This is one we got picked up yesterday. Is it today the 20th? Correct. Yeah. Pen uh, this is one we picked up yesterday. Pending sale. See, they take them off the market whenever they're pending, right? When they accept a bid. And we picked this one up for $53,000. And it started out being listed at $104. So we picked it up at almost 50% of the original list price, higher than the current list price, right? But that's yep. okay. We're going to wholesale this house as well, right? And this, this, these are deals that we're doing right now in today's market, right? Right now in today's yep. market, right? So guys, we're gonna answer some questions, but if you want the HUD sheet, if you want, it's included in the HUD Mastery program, you can go to hudmastery.com forward slash VIP and it'll tell you all about it. HUD Mastery is a complete home study course that also includes the spreadsheet. And here's the kicker. I have paid my HUD sheet developer Howard, who lives in uh, South Africa, he is a HUD, he is a spreadsheet guru. And I have him on retainer to give you support and help you if you need help getting getting this thing up and running, okay? So uh, go to hudmastery.com forward slash VIP. You can get the whole HUD mastery training, which includes the HUD spreadsheet and video tutorials. It also includes live recordings of my uh, of my HUD my nothing but HUD event that people paid five hundred dollars just to attend and you can get everything for just four ninety seven today and uh, or you can call toll free eight 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 two one two six five six seven so let me um, let me answer a few questions here Andrea would you stay on for a few minutes and see if we sure. make sure we can answer some questions yes let's see how can you get through bidding to the highest and best what offer do you start with again the following Monday? The sheet automatically does it for you. It does it for you and it starts over with the Monday bid again. Why are some acquisition manager sales empty? Will you still automatically bid or not until reviewed? There are bids listed. Uh, Andrew, correct me if I'm wrong, but when a sheet, when a property gets added to the sheet, the sheet automatically puts in the shotgun bid amount which is a percentage of lists, like you mentioned earlier, 25, 40, or 50, 
Correct. But it automatically puts it in until you have time to go in and put a specific number on it. That way, at least you're getting some bids out there until you have time to actually spend some time and analyze each property, correct? Yes, that is correct. So they're blank because they have not been analyzed yet, but they're automatically set up with those parameters for bidding. So the girl that puts the bids in, she will bid on every single property every single day, regardless whether we've reviewed it or not. So it will right. either have the automated number or my number in it. Okay, good, good, good. All right, so after you offer max bid on Friday, do you continue to bid max every day? No, it starts over on Monday. Correct. Let's see, Alex, uh, do you ask for 45 day closing? You can, you can put whatever closing you want to on there. You put the date on it whenever you put the bid in. Is that correct, Andrea? That's correct. They start on the closing date. If you're offering cash, they only allow you 30 days. If you're working with a lender or a loan, that's an automatic 45 days. And that clock starts ticking from the day you sign your contract, not the bid that's date. Right. That's right. Okay. Uh, Jay wants to know, do I have to get a licensed agent to submit the bids? Yes, you do. Can I run this business without an agent? You have to have either an agent with an NAID number or a nonprofit with an NAID number to be able to submit your bids. And that's not difficult to do. In fact, in the HUD Mastery program, we show you exactly how to do that. Um, is there a link to a recording? As I was late to the webinar, uh, Sam will send out an email for the uh, replay. Uh, are the days on market listed on HUD site or do those days on market reflect how long you are watching that listing? Uh, Andrea, I'm going to let you respond to that. Um, the days on market do reflect it, it. The days on market on the spreadsheet reflect from the day it, it comes live from the HUD um, site. Right, so and also the days on market that you were talking about, the 30, 60, 90. Um, that's not really a days on market. I believe what that is, if that's what you're referring to, is. Um, that was the actual um, inspection date when the last inspection was done 30 days, 60 days, or 90 days ago. Good, good. And also, I think you might have pointed it out, but in the HUD spreadsheet, it will notify you and even color code it when a property hits 30 days on the market, 60 days on the market, and 90 days on the market, right? Yes, that is correct. Yeah. Robert wants to know can you wholesale? Uh, when you wholesale, can you assign a HUD? No, you either use transactional funding or some of the other methods I show you in the training to be able to assign them if you don't have any money. Uh, Robert also wants to know the deposit. Robert, if the bid amount accepted is below $50,000, it is $500 deposit. If it's over $50,000, it's a $1,000 deposit. Uh, so paying for these requires more than paying for those you buy with filthy riches. Is there any financing available? You know, there's a lot of different kind of financing available for these properties. You could use hard money, private money, uh, cash partners, credit partners, credit cards, you know, home equity lines of credit. You could use a lot of different things. There's a lot of sources out there. In fact, in the training, I show you every way to close and fund on these deals at, at hudmastery.com forward slash VIP. That's hudmastery.com forward slash VIP or call 888-212-6567. Uh, and uh, it's, it's only $497 today. Uh, can you say that you are financing to give more time to, well, uh, Sandra, as a, an investor, when you bid on a HUD house, it's not subject to financing and it's not subject to any inspection. So you can tell them whatever you want to, but if you bid, and you win the bid, then they expect you to either close, uh, but you can ask for an extension. If you need an extension because of financing or whatever, that's okay, you can get an extension. Now they're gonna charge you, Andrea, what do they charge you for an extension? I believe it's 250, but that's only for a certain amount of days. It, it just goes up depending on how much and they still have to get it approved. So um, it's not something I would just count on doing. Right, right. Okay, let's see. Um, yeah, all you got to do if you are, we've, we've got some people on here that already own HUD Mastery. All you've got to do is log in, go to LarryGoins.com and log in. 
and then go to your HUD Mastery Program, and you can get the updated uh, updated spreadsheet, and uh, there's some other goodies there as well. Uh, no inspection. There's no inspection, period, Sandra. No inspection, period. So um, that's all the questions we have so far. If you guys have any more questions, shoot them out there right quick. But uh, Andrea, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. You're welcome. Thank you. That's awesome. Awesome. So um, let's see. Carmela wants to know, I'm licensed but not active. Would it be better for me to activate my license? If, if you can activate it, you can be your own HUD agent. There's nothing wrong with that. Nobody will tell you that you, you can't bid on your house, the own, your own houses. The only thing is you can't be a HUD listing agent and bid on them. Okay. That's what's important, Carmela. Okay, uh, what about homes that are on the MLS that are on the HUD home store? Uh, I'm not sure what that means. What about them? They're going to show up on the MLS because they are listed on the MLS as well. But you can only bid on them at HUDHomestore.com if it's an MLS property, right? Correct. Yes, you can. Good, good. All right, guys. Let's see. My analyzer does have the update HUD counter link. Does not have get the data from VA. I'm not sure what that question is, Ralph. I'm not sure. Um, does, I'm not. I'm. I'm sorry, Ralph. I'm not understanding your question. But if you'll if you'll go to uh, LarryGoinSupport.com, if you already own HUD Mastery and you need help with your spreadsheet then you'll go to LarryGoinSupport.com. You'll submit a support ticket. Once we verify that you own the course or you are an Inner Circle Apprentice member, then we'll put you in direct contact with the spreadsheet developer himself, and he will help you personally, right? Uh, so inspection, you mean with a real inspector? No, what I mean is there's no due diligence period. That's all. That's all I mean. With There's no due diligence period right uh okay let's see here let's see if we got a couple more thank you thank you that's awesome uh not many properties in washington state do you know why yes because there aren't as many hud houses there right now i mean i'm not really sure what else to say other than that i mean there's there's a lot of them in places like ohio uh, Alabama, stuff like that. I mean, at one time there was over a hundred in each state in North and South Carolina, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Am I supposed to continue to bid on every home every day? Yes. You do bid on every home every day. That's what we do. I think I remember that Larry helps make sure we don't pay too much for filthy riches properties. Well, in, in the, the HUD mastery program, I do show you what to do with the houses, whether you want to wholesale them or sell or finance them or lease option. You know, it just depends on what you want to do with it, right? Once accepted, you have 30 days to close. If you put 30 days on the bid amount, then yes, you have 30 days to close. Uh, so what do you do if the houses aren't in your area? Bid somewhere else, right? Um, Yes, if you have the HUD Mastery course, yes, you can still get access to it, Barry. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, so if after winning bid, I discover it's a full gut, is this subject to renegotiate? Sometimes you can renegotiate with them if you can show them something that is a material fact that they were not aware of. Like maybe there were pipes frozen they didn't know of, or maybe their electrical had been stolen and they weren't aware. So they will either let you out of the contract or give you a discount to go ahead and close. We had something a while back where some appliances were stole and they just gave us some credit at closing. So that's all the questions I got. Guys, I hope you guys really, really enjoyed this. Did you get a lot out of this spreadsheet demo and seeing properties that we're doing right now in today's market? Let me hear some feedback. Uh, can I get my agent's approval to use their NAID? Yes. Yes, if that's exactly what we do, right? That's exactly what we do. Um, awesome, awesome. Yes, yes, yes. Great demo. Yes. Andrea is the bomb. <laughs> Thank and, you. Andrea is the bomb. The legend and the myth also. So, guys, if you want to pick up the $4,000 spreadsheet for only $4.97 plus the entire two-day 
raw unedited recordings and video tutorials and everything else that goes with it go to hudmastery.com forward slash vip hudmastery.com forward slash vip or call toll free 888-212-6567 and with that we're going to cut out of here andrea thanks so much for being on and playing along and you. demoing this thanks everybody for watching thanks a lot everybody Bye-bye.